it's become my little tradition to de-stress before I go into Ukraine the night before when I can't sleep. I watch the Kardashians. I'm going to give you a tour of our armoured vehicle, which is really intense and has six centimetre thick glass. Initial impressions, Daniel, are... Oh, the doors are so heavy. So heavy. Yeah. I feel almost invincible, which is a very dangerous way to feel in a war zone. So we're on our way to the capital now, Kiev, but we're running into trouble with fuel because as you get closer to the capital, all of the petrol stations are closed. And that's because at the moment, a huge alarm signal is in place, warning of missile strikes in this region. The most delicious Ukrainian delicacy, which you can buy from every petrol station and essentially all we eat, are these hot dogs. There is no electricity in the city uh, because of a missile strike this morning. So it's a complete blackout at this hotel. We've just had to pay with wads of cash. So just about to hop in the shower and get to bed. And the sirens went off. Luckily, Dan's able to sleep anywhere. I'm going to worry for the both of us. I mean, what a sight. A child now playing in the crater of a missile strike, which hit what, five steps from a playground? That is just, that actually makes me so angry and upset. The first thing we have to do whenever we get somewhere is work out where the hard cover is, the closest place to run if strikes were to start. You can see that these buildings are completely destroyed and this is the central business district of the capital city. Another air raid warning as we stand filming at the site of the previous missile strike. Sometimes when you see this stuff, you have to remind yourself that it's not just a really well-made film set because it doesn't seem real. But... It is, and then that is when you start to get teary-eyed. You can see that this apartment building has been hit incredibly hard. The residents were hiding in the basement when the Russians launched their assault here. This was a kindergarten. So here is a line of people waiting for humanitarian aid. They only allow 300 people to line up at a time, although the need is much greater than that because they're worried about becoming a target. There are frightened animals all over the district, and you can see this one has found a safe place. Here's your tip for a good day's work. Thanks. It's actually a little light. <laughs> <laughs> my latest wartime experience is trying to dry my hair, but it sounds too much like a siren. So I put it on for 20 seconds, freak out, turn it off, make sure it's not a real siren. Oh, great work, I see. Mm -hmm. There's so much to worry about here in New Zealand, isn't there, from COVID to inflation today to child poverty. And actually, you've Yet, you've found yourself quite affected by what's happening in well, Ukraine. It's been interesting. I feel like a lot of people my age as well, we ingest this news through, weirdly, social media. And, like, through TikTok, you'll see people like myself, you know, living their life in Ukraine and Kiev, sharing their experience through TikTok. And it's this interesting way of connecting, because it, it doesn't seem real, but then it feels like it could just be you over there as well. It gives this really interesting... Yeah, human experience. Plenty is said about the problems of social media, the huge problems of TikTok, but in terms of feeling empathy for someone halfway around the world, nothing gets you closer, right? Well, it's just as like it could be your phone, couldn't it? Filming mm. that, and it's what are they showing you? Well, it's just you see these people similar age to myself uh, trying to get on with their life and try to have a sense of normalcy, and but they're living in a war zone, and it's their homes, it's their houses, so it's um, workplaces, it's. It's so surreal, and they, yet there's a sort of way that they share it that does also emphasise how surreal it is for them in that mm -hmm. experience. Yeah.